Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, January 31, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, we have a few things that we need to discuss. We're right in front of Kabuki Theater Day. The FOMC announcement culminates Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, so whatever the market does before the Fed announcement almost has no bearing on what happens after the Fed announcement. However, there are some signs and signals out here that give us some clues. We had a pretty interesting ramp higher into the end of the day. We'll take a look at that a little bit later when we look at some shorter term charts. Market finished on the high. It's a bullish tape above all the moving averages, and the trend is your friend. Let's broaden the scope a little bit and say they jam the market higher after the Fed announcement. Where might they go? Well, the first area of interest is right around 410.50, which is this previous high. Above that, you're going to have about 415, 417, and then you have 420, which is up here. So there's a zone up above. We're going to lower it a little bit. We're going to say between 415 and 420, which is a wide area, but think about what's coming up. The market is going to get disjointed around the Fed, whether it goes up or down. There's a lot of points that are wound up in the market that can come out in a hurry. That can happen. We don't know what will happen. Sometimes from time to time, we see a subdued Fed announcement, market reaction type of thing. But right now, we're in that inflation, CPI data, interest rate cycle situation. So I think there is some coiled up action going on underneath the tape. Basically, the net net of what's going on tomorrow is the market, meaning the marketplace by virtue of the Fed signaling what they're going to do, which is raise interest rates once again, one quarter of 1%. Now, in the big scheme of things, one quarter of 1% doesn't come up in the rounding in most situations. But it's the concept of what the Fed says. It's the concept of, are they going to slow or stop the raising interest rate stuff? Are they going to signal that they can slow the withdrawal of liquidity from the market? These are the things that the marketplace is looking for. Now, if the marketplace gets a surprise, like the Fed raises 50 or 75 basis points, that could promote one type of reaction, maybe in the downward direction. That could promote what we call a trap door slash rug pull event. We talked about some of those upside numbers, 415 to 420, it's a wide range, but 415 would be the first really, really important place on a spike through for 10 and a half. Doesn't have to happen within the five or 10 minute candle, but it's the first important, real important place if they start pushing above for 10 and a half. What about the downside? Let's say they do pull the rug out a little bit. What's the first place? About the breakout area. That's down here below 400, just slightly below 400. What happens if they keep going? The next important place will be the convergence of these moving averages, call it 395. So you have a 50-point span above current price, above 41050, and you have a 50-point span below current price, 400 to 395. What if they kill the tape and they spike through, on the downside, the convergence of those moving averages? What's the next major important place? About 389, give or take. Write that down. Put it on a sticky note in case you need it. There's not much else we can say from a daily chart perspective relating to the S&P before the Kabuki Theater whip them around EKG type of tape tomorrow afternoon. But what we can do is once again reference the weekly chart. We have an important trend line. They're breaking above the trend line. Is that promoting more bullish behavior? It's likely the answer is yes. Can they come down to run a test of that trend line from above? And the answer is yes. Now, let's look at something a little more granular for a second. What happens if they do that? 
let's just say for argument's sake, they come back to run a test, whether it's tomorrow or another day, of the top end after breaking out of the top end of that trend line. Where does that put price? Well, let's project out tomorrow, for example. Well, what we do is we take the uh, cursor, the crossbar, and we go to tomorrow. So today, one notch over, one daily candle over would be tomorrow. The intersection of this trend line is just above 395. Funny how that works. That's the same 395 we just talked about for an entirely different reason. Maybe it's 396. Maybe it's 395.80. It's a little bit subjective of exactly where that trend line is. However, you get the point. This is a concept, and here's the deal, and this is our gauge. This is really what we need to know from a what's the market big picture actually trying to accomplish. We're going to use this trend line for our bull bear case. We're not going to get bearish the tape until or unless the market gets below this trend line And that will be what we'll call at the time, if they do, a false breakout or bull trap situation. But if they stay above the trend line, there's no reason to be bearish the tape. Is there another place where one could begin to get bearish if they did pull the rug out? Well, the first order of business would be the former high. Start getting below today's low, yesterday's low, 400, the former high, the breakout area. Former high meaning they ran up, they pulled back, they broke out above it, come back to test the former breakout area. That's right underneath 400. That would be the first place where you would raise an eyebrow. Let's check in over inside the numbers. Let's see what happened inside the live room today and inside the numbers. Remember, I'm moderating still the live room We're having learning experiences. We're having money being made. Traders have a good feel for the intraday tape inside the numbers, inside the numbers live. It's turnaround Tuesday. We've got a little more follow through to the downside. That was zero dark 30. That was the buy the dip crab that showed up later on, pre-market thieves, all that stuff. Today begins the two day FOMC boondoggle which means we're still waiting on the Fed through tomorrow afternoon, which also means there's some back and forth type opportunity today. We must keep the bigger picture in mind until it's off the table. Are we still in a pullback situation with another leg higher coming? That turned out to be the case, but you want to get your faculties early in the morning, the pregame warm-up routine. And the current uptrend look from the 19th of this month can still put in a higher low. Just to give you a clue of what I was referring to in that last note, the uptrend from the 19th of this month, just going back to here, that's the 19th, and we have an uptrend, and this morning price was beginning to come down, and what I'm saying is just take this from here and say, look, as long as they kind of maintain this trajectory, they could still come down, run some tests, could even connect these pivots and say, well, they're already doing that. I was just saying, as long as they maintain the higher low situation, meaning this, low, higher low, if they made a higher low today, it still maintains the current uptrend. They didn't have to come down to the moving averages, but that's what I was referring to in the pre-market note in terms of the uptrend from the 19th. First, we look at the north side of the tape, which would begin by getting back above last night's closing price, which is yesterday's close, 465, filling the gap, going into the green slash positive for the day. The next place of true overhead resistance comes in around 401.50, then back to 402.20, one of yesterday's buy for a bounce places. And then any more at this point in the morning we'll handle in a real-time type of formation. Okay, we had some lower stuff, but we didn't need that as the day morphed closer to the opening bell. Now, watch this. Obviously, we're waiting on the Fed. 435 to 465 is overhead resistance. That's when price was below in the pre-market session. Then we have some other stuff, and we get to 402.20. But check this out for a moment. Once they got above the zone that was going to be resistance in the pre-market if they ran up there, 
you see that's that 465 down lower to 435. That became not necessarily support. They never actually got there. The market was extra buoyant today, if you will. They never filled the gap left open from yesterday in the other direction. They came close, left some unfinished business, and took off in the northern direction. Let's see what else we have as the morning morphs on. As the pre-market thieves conduct a goose operation in the northern direction, we'll note some additional numbers. Above 402.20, the door opens for 402.80, and then a spike of 403 to around 403 and a quarter. The morning prize for the bulls would be a jam session all the way up to 404 and a quarter. Awareness for now and the pregame warm up routine. Okay, fair enough. Now, 9.15, we're getting ready to go. We've got a whole host of stuff. I urge you to pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. We have a zone of overhead resistance 40280, 403 and a quarter. Can a trader short the first zone around 403, give or take? That's 40280 to 403 and a quarter. I'm splitting the difference. Can a trader short that? As long as they understand that where the spike goes, 40430, yes, they can. It's an aggressive short. The more conservative short would have been higher, obviously. And 40220 is overhead resistance. Now, keep that thought for a moment. We're going to go to the charts in a moment. 921. 40220 is our early pivot. Line in the sand. Above opens the door for the higher stuff. Staying below keeps the lid on things. And the door opens for a test back down to 401, maybe down to 435. We're expecting a test of the pivot. Now, they were below the pivot when this was written. Market wasn't even open yet. Now, SPY five-minute chart, right of the vertical is today's activity. First line, 402.20. Here's the opening print. They open 401.11. They go back and forth for a while, and they go and test the pivot. They never fill the gap, but they tested the pivot first. Is the pivot overhead resistance on the first hit? All the time, not necessarily 100% of the time, but we do have that situation a lot of the time. They're going to run a test of the pivot. They're going to react from the pivot. They do this over and over and over again. Not to say they can't get above, but they're always going to run a test of that pivot from whether it's below or above. They're going to test the pivot. 930, above 401 and a quarter, and the door opens for Another 10 points higher, a dollar in the S&P or SPY, the door opens for 402.20, is the pivot should be tested. We had some traders that rode it up to the pivot. Here comes the pivot, it's overhead resistance, and they can react down in the other direction. It's higher risk at the time, a higher risk short scalp, but react from the pivot is generally what will happen. What did they do? They tested the pivot. They reacted back down. They didn't let us buy the gap just a few pennies lower. And then they took off. Once you get above the pivot, back above the pivot, I should say, it's bullish behavior. And what are they going to do? They're going to go to the next place. Watch this. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. 945, above 401 and a quarter, doors open for the pivot. Couldn't say it enough times. There's your test of the pivot just minutes later. So it gets a funny how that works. We had some traders that shorted the pivot. We had some traders ride it up to the pivot. We've got something for everybody. Not everybody wants the long trade in the morning. Not everybody wants the short trade in the morning. Some traders want both. Some traders want a stocks on the move. Something for everyone. 40280 is the next target if they get above the pivot. Sooner than later, there's a short in the zone between 40280 and 403 and a quarter for a reaction back down. Starts as a scalp, morphs from there. Next zone, they actually just went back and forth in that zone. They did pull back. They gave some scalp trades along the way. You can see this from the top of the zone to below the bottom of the zone. But they basically went back and forth, building energy to do what? Another push higher. What was the next Number, do you remember? 40430, overhead resistance. Overhead resistance means two things. It means the market's going to A, stop going up at least temporarily because it's overhead resistance. 
They can pull back. They can run sideways. But these important numbers are also magnetic. Therefore, they pull price in the closer price gets. As long as they're above one, they start working on the next. The closer they get to the next, they pull price in. Pause the video. Read the notes. Go back to the chart to double check the work. It's all in here. I give you the taste test. All the notes all morning long through lunchtime is everything you need to know where the tape is, to know how to trade the tape if you're interested to trade the tape, know where the bullish side is, know where the bearish side is. If above one, here's the next. If below one, here's the next. That's the way the market works. How about stocks on the move? We had one hit its entry objective today. It was Caterpillar. We'll take a look at the chart. Haircut at the opening bell, cats trading down to around the 250 place. 250.50 was the first number, 248.65 was the second number, 246.07 was the third number. Now, why am I going over this in detail? Because we traded this one live in the room and made a real time adjustment and worked out really, really nicely for traders. Here's what happened the market came into the second number and it bounced away, it came up short. The low was 248.77, came up, what, 12 cents short and bounced away. Takes the second number off the table. In real time, we lowered the second number to 247 and traders hopped on. They ended up with a 250.50 and a 247 purchase. Their average is in the middle. And guess what? We took first profit back up at 250.50 and then guess what? They were told it's going to get to 253. Did they get to 253? What's the high over here? 253.50. Nice trade. The total gainer was about 1.7% from the average entry. This is what traders were walked through in the room. And the way it worked was simple. I'm running through the commentary on the SPY in real time in the live room. Cat's coming into its number. Jordan chimes in. Cat's getting close. We switch over, take a look at it. Traders that are interested in cat hop on board, and then we manage it in real time. Nice trade. We also had a hint of a bullish day because the IWM was having a relative strength kind of day against the SPY. So we can see here that they've broken out above this place. Is it going to be a real breakout? or a false breakout, and certainly tomorrow afternoon with Kabuki slash FOMC plus a Powell press conference is the perfect recipe to do one or the other. And frankly, we just don't know in advance. The tape is bullish. Above the trend line we looked at on the weekly chart from the S&P perspective, that's bullish, but that doesn't mean they can't flip around and get below, but the tape is bullish at present. My second favorite market leading indicator, the folks down at the transportation department are saying the bulls are back in town, up three and a half percent. It's either a big fat fake out or the bulls are back in town. Could it be a buy the rumor, sell the news event? It's all possible. We really just don't know in advance. It's a guess slash coin flip slash roulette spin. Q people up one and a quarter percent, about on par, maybe slightly less than the S&P. But again, it's all the same market and they're all going to react together after Kabuki. Nothing wrong with the financials. If the financials are strong, the market's not going to fall apart. Where are they relative to the former high? I think they closed above today. The former high was 36.49. Today's close 36.56. We go over to a weekly chart see what's happening, and you can see they're breaking above the 100 period moving average that they were riding all this time. They rode it, dipped, they're back riding it. Are they back to fail again, or did they come back to break through? Tomorrow will likely be a big answer. Anything wrong with Smash Mouth? Up four bucks, 1.7%, above all the moving averages, same routine. Same routine across the board, it's a bullish day, Everything is going to hinge on the reaction after Kabuki. They're going to move them. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost. 
my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.